You want a war? You're gonna get one. Forget the love, the money. We're in this together and through it all. They said that nothing's forever. Hey yo, welcome back to Reliving the War everyone. In this week's episode, Raw and Nitro didn't go head to head. Nitro was live on Monday night from Tampa, Florida on the 16th of February, while Raw aired on Saturday the 21st from Dallas, Texas. I thought about splitting these up this week into two separate episodes, but I ended up deciding against it, no point in overcomplicating things. So we'll just compare Raw and Nitro as usual and see who had the better show. WWF No Way Out of Texas took place on Sunday and the big story coming out of the pay-per-view was Shawn Michaels' absence. Check out my video on the way out whenever you get a chance. And over on the WCW side, we've got Super Brawl 8 coming up later in the week, so there's a lot to dig into and a lot to talk about. Let's start with Nitro's first 60 minutes as usual. WCW dedicate this week's show to Luis Piccoli, and what you see here is how the Nitro broadcast began. We talked briefly about Louis passing last week and it's always sad seeing these kind of graphics and memorials at the beginning of wrestling shows. It happens way too often. The commentators announce a Lex Luger and Sting vs Hogan and Savage main event for tonight's show and the big question is, can Savage and Hogan coexist? My money says no, they can't. This tag team match came about because Bischoff wanted to bring harmony back to the New World Order, but on Thunder, Hogan demanded an apology from Macho Man Randy Savage for his recent behaviour, Savage decided to smack Hogan instead. Hollywood comes out for his mandatory weekly promo on Nitro and he's joined by the entire NWO faction except Randy Savage. Hogan says it's time for an all out war and there's a few things he needs to address. First, Bret Hart's on the hit list tonight, Hogan plans on getting revenge for Starcade, he's a bit late though but yeah. Secondly, Nick Patrick's gonna be the referee in the Super Brawl main event and Hulk says he doesn't care if he has to pay a whole lot of money to get Patrick officiating the match. Next, Randy Savage, Randy needs to apologise to the NWOites for sucker punching Hollywood and <laughs> look at Eric Bischoff, he looks so fed up. What's your problem Easy? enjoy yourself, it's fucking Nitro. Macho Man then shows up on the entrance way, he's not gonna apologise. He says he'll beat Luger and Sting all on his own tonight and then he'll beat up Hollywood Hogan. Hogan says he's gonna sting the stinger and Macho can take care of Luger, but when the ring clears out, Hogan's gonna rip that bandana off Savage's bald head and take the Macho Man out. Looks like Randy didn't appreciate the bald comment, Buff Bagwell thought it was amazing though. On Thunder, Goldberg defeated Glacier and… oh, let's see that again. Yeah. Goldberg then defeated Steve McMichael twice at house shows on the 13th and the 14th, and then he went to WCW Worldwide where he destroyed Jumpin' Joey Mags. Goldberg then defeated Hugh Morris this week on Monday Nitro, and that means Goldberg is now 36 0 by our count. Do you still think it's impossible for Goldberg to reach 173 wins by late December? The Outsiders take over the commentary desk, and Kevin Nash says WCW are singling out the Outsiders. Nash and Hall wanted a shot at the Steiner brothers tonight but they were told they have to wait until Super Brawl and Nash's jackknife is also still outlawed. Tony Schiavone tells Nash to catch a fucking grip, they're gonna get Rick and Scott in 6 days and Nash says it's the outsiders right to face the champs tonight on Nitro. I think they fucked up here and there was some miscommunication regarding the announcement of the Super Brawl tag team match, but Nash tells Abisco to keep his mouth shut or Big Sexy will unplug his dialysis machine. Sick Boy of Raven's Flock then wrestled Mark Starr and Sick Boy won the match with a pedigree. It was one more for the good guys before the outsiders took on the public enemy next, so no, they didn't get that match against Rick and Scott on Nitro. Scott Hall got put on a table but Dusty Rhodes was there to provide a distraction and Johnny Grunge switched places with Hall. Nash then jackknifed Rock o Rock on top of Grunge and that's 50k of Hulk Hogan's money well spent brother. DQ finished but the outsiders are absolutely delighted with their work. Nash gets arrested again and again he shouts Etika as the boys in blue take him downtown. 
Nick Patrick says there's a conspiracy going on, he's not booked the referee any matches tonight on Nitro, and Patrick thinks JJ Dillon's trying to assassinate his character and put him out of a job. Patrick's only one man and he's up against a corporation with thousands of lawyers. Hogan's putting up money for Patrick the referee the Super Brawl match, so Nick wants to take Hogan up on that offer because he needs all the money he can get. Mike Enos vs Barry Horowitz ladies and gents, again 3 R nitros, fucking amazing. Enos wins with a power slam, sure to lead to bigger and better things. Davey Boy Smith's walking about backstage, drinking his coffee, Steve McMichael approaches him and uh, <laughs> have a listen. And don't stand there drinking coffee when a man's talking to you Davey Boy, Davey Boy, Boy, Boy. And don't stand there drinking coffee when a man's talking to you Davey Boy, Davey Boy. Alright, so the way Mongo says Davy Boy with such bravado is fantastic, but is it really that disrespectful to stand there and drink coffee when a man's talking to you? If your boss comes up to you, do you say, oh shit, sorry, let me put my coffee down, don't want to seem disrespectful, you know? What Mongo didn't know though, that wasn't coffee, oh no. Davy was drinking his competitive juices. Things get so bad that powerhouses Jerry Lynn with an F and Disco Inferno have to hold Davy back. Consider yourself totally fucked at Super brawl big mongo. Yuji Nagata took on the parking next and to get a little payback for last week, Disco Inferno hit the ring and he hit a chartbuster, costing La Parka the match. Disco better watch his back because I don't think La Parka is going to take this one lying down. Smackhead Kidman then chased the dragon when he wrestled Ultimo Dragon. It was another impressive performance from Billy, but in the end though he topped out to the dragon sleeper. Raw kicks off with an LOD vs Quebecers match, on Nitro we've got a DDP promo. Jim Ross says a rumours going around that DX are going to sue Steve Austin for what he did to China at No Way Out, but Austin's in the arena tonight and he's gonna address DX in his Wrestlemania match. The commentators also talk about the Legion of Doom missing something and not being the tag team they once were just before the Quebecers, no not the amazing French Canadians, the Quebecers make their way down to the ring. So it looks like the WWF are gonna try to build a story about the the downfall of the Road Warriors. That doesn't sound depressing at all. Hawk destroys Jacques Rougeau at the opening bell, Jacques kips up and Hawk goes down after a dropkick. Jacques then shows off a bit but that was a mistake as Hawk hits him with a clothesline. Pierre doesn't have much luck against Animal either, he takes a power slam and a hard shoulder block before tagging out again, but the Quebecers then work together to get Animal out of the ring and Pierre performs a cannonball from the apron. The New Age Outlaws then show up and they've got a big old dumpster, Hawk ends up falling out of the ring and the Outlaws attack him before putting him in the dumpster, Mike Kyoto doesn't see nor hear a thing. Jock performs a pile driver, the Quebecers double team the road warrior as Jim Ross talks about how oblivious the referee is, Animal does manage to perform a double clothesline and he then realises that his tag team partner's in a giant dumpster so he runs out, he grabs a chair and the Legion of Doom chase the New Age Outlaws up the rampway. Hawk and Animal get counted out so it's another loss for the LOD and a cheap win for Jacques and Pierre. Mean Gene Okerlund reminds DDP that he's defending the US title this Sunday against Chris Benoit at Super Brawl. DDP says he respects Benoit because Chris doesn't get involved with these gangs or factions. He's helped Benoit fight all flock members because he wants Chris at 100% this Sunday and he wants Benoit all jacked up. Dallas wants Benoit at his best, Chris wants Dallas at his best too and the only way that can be guaranteed is if Raven and his top henchman Perry Saturn get taken out. So DDP's got a match booked, Benoit and Page vs Raven and Saturn this week on Thunder. Dallas wants to know if Raven's got a problem with that and if he does he can step into the ring right now and do something about it. Raven gets in, the crowd goes nuts. Saturn then jumps in the ring and Dallas hesitates a bit and then Chris Benoit shows up and this makes Raven and Saturn think twice. I'll let you guys know what happens in this thunder match in the Super Brawl video this week. Ming vs The Barbarian on Nitro, holy shit, and Ken Shamrock vs Sniper on Raw. Before the Raw match, the WWF play a China highlight video, we see everything China's done so far in the company, and it ends with Steve Austin hitting China with a stunner at No Way Out. 
Michael Cole says DX will be on Raw next week to talk about No Way Out, so that must mean DX are not part of this broadcast. During Shamrock's entrance, it's announced that Kenny Boy vs The Rock is now official for WrestleMania, and Rock will defend his IC title in that match. Sniper goes down after a drop toe hold, and Ken's like, why am I even wrestling this guy? The Jackal's on commentary talking a load of old bollocks as Shamrock makes easy work of his opponent. Ken's out wrestling Sniper with submission holds, and Sniper has to get some advice from Recon. I'm sure it was great advice too. The plan gets revealed when Recon grabs Shamrock, and Kenny Boy gets sent to the outside. Recon gets in a few cheap shots and this allows Sniper to take advantage for a brief moment inside the ropes, but the world's most dangerous man isn't about to get defeated by this goon tonight. Ken takes all Sniper has to offer, a clothesline, a sidewalk slam, a suplex, it's all a waste of time. Ken pulls off a power slam, he then performs an armbar takedown, he applies the ankle lock, and Jackal realises at this very moment that his little team is actually quite shit. Recon tries to attack Ken, but he too ends up looking like a chump. Jackal gets in the ring and he slaps Sniper, he then turns his back on his team once again, but this time he gets shoved, and it looks like the Commission of Truth have had enough of their leader. Recon and Sniper leave the ring as Jackal smiles at the camera. So how did the faces of fear explode and why has the manliest tag team in the history of the universe split up? On Thunder, Ming defeated Hugh Morris and he wouldn't let go of the Tongan death grip. The Barbarian came down to talk some sense into the Minger, but Ming wasn't having it and he put the death grip on his own partner. On Nitro, Jimmy Hart comes out with the Barbarian, and man, this is like seeing your two dads fighting over your custody. Barbarian with a belly to belly to start us off, and oh, oh man, oh, somebody's going to get killed here, somebody stop the match. They get up and they start throwing knife edge chops, and check this out, Ming then performs the E Honda 100 hand slap. Barbarian's German suplex here looks pretty stiff. It amazes me that the commentary team talk about Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage when this absolute war goes on inside the ring. Both men go down after a double clothesline, they get up and Ming hits a super kick, but then Jimmy Hart gets a bright idea, he's gonna smash a wooden chair over Ming's head and he also thinks this is gonna put the man called Ming down. No such luck Jimmy. Barbarian saves Hart from a Tongan death grip and the match ends when Ming takes multiple big boots to the face until he just can't stand up anymore. A ridiculously hard hitting match and a very fun match up here on Monday Nitro. Uh, we were supposed to have Disco Inferno vs Saturn on Nitro. On Raw, Mark Merrow and Sable cut a promo. The Parker gives fans one of the most replayed moments in Disco's whole career, and the Inferno's been taken out. It doesn't stop there though, Le Parker continues to swing his chair and kick Disco while he's down, so it looks like Saturn doesn't have an opponent. Here comes Rick Martel, snitching, grassing, narking, squealing, tattletail Rick Martel, and he wants to fight Saturn even though he's got a match later against Booker T. No WCW executive committee necessary, referee Mickey J says yeah, do whatever the fuck you want, so the match begins and Saturn beats the hell out of Martel in the corner. Martel replies with a back body drop, a drop kick and a head scissor takedown, and Saturn gets thrown to the ring steps when the match goes outside. Back in the ring, Martel goes for another flying head scissors but Saturn drops him on the top rope. Perry then pulls off a top rope drop kick, and game over Mr. Martel, there's a chin lock. Saturn lets go because it's illegal to kill someone in the middle of the ring and he performs a body slam instead. His double axe handle from the top rope misses, Rick performs his Buster, he then goes for the Quebec Crab, but the flock get involved and the referee doesn't see a thing. Scotty Riggs takes Martel out with a jumping forearm smash, Saturn applies the rings of Saturn, and Rick Martel should have stayed in the back because this match is over. Perry Saturn defeats Rick Martel on Nitro. Over on Raw, Recon says there are no issues and no communication breakdowns between the Commission and the Jackal. Sniper shows up and he thinks otherwise. He wants Recon to join him in walking away from the Jackal, but it looks like Recon isn't too keen on the idea. 
In the ring, Jerry Lawler wants to know if Sable and Mark Merrill were going to split up after what happened at No Way Out, and Mark says this all began when he was at home dealing with his knee injury. Merrill saw his wife advertising an Austin 316 shirt on Raw. Sable's trying to steal his sp- <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Sable's trying to steal Mero's spotlight and Sable wants to become a star but fans want to see a wrestler win matches and that's what Mero brings to the table. Mark says, as Sable now knows her place, she'll do what she's told and she belongs to Marvelous Mark. Sable gets another gift from her secret admirer and Mark wants to know who these flowers are from. Sable takes the gift, she says it's nice to know that someone's actually thinking about her unlike her bastard husband here, and Mark's forced to follow Sable back up the rampway when she walks away. Who's the secret admirer folks, who's got the hots for Sable? Answers in the comments. The Rock and Roll Express take on the Headbangers next on Raw. On Nitro, we've got Kurt Hennig vs Bobby Eaton. I know there'd be a lot of people interested in seeing a Hennig vs Eaton match, but don't get your hopes up. It's a painfully short match and beautiful Bobby was never gonna win either, so it's also predictable. Looks like the days of Kurt Hennig main eventing Nitro after Nitro are also over. Neither man gets the advantage after the initial lockup, Kurt slaps Bobby in the corner, Bobby slaps Kurt right back, and the two look at each other for a bit before going back at it. Kurt puts Bobby down with a chop, another chop sends Eaton out of the ring and Rick Rude throws Bobby back inside the ropes. Eaton goes out again after a knee lift and again Rude throws him back in. And the same thing happens all over again after Bobby takes another knife edge chop. Bobby tries to fight back and Kurt hits the mat after a chop block. Eaton's attempts at weakening Kurt's knee get stopped with a punch to the face. Kurt then pulls off the perfect plex and that's it over. A few of you guys get a little defensive when Kurt Hennig matches come under any scrutiny, so please do try and defend that shit. Speaking of shit, the NWA faction get more TV time next. This time, it's the Rock and Roll Express taking on the Headbangers. Cornette cuts a promo beforehand and the days of Cornette's commentaries are now over. He's still got excellent delivery, but he's not saying anything that bites anymore. It's all about the NWA bringing traditional wrestling back and getting rid of sports entertainment for good. Cornette isn't happy that fans are booing the NWA faction, so the NWA are gonna force fans to enjoy traditional wrestling. He says NWA official Tommy Young has been assigned to this tag team match, so there'll be no WWF fuckery going on inside the ring. So, the NWA tag team titles are up for grabs. The tag team match is pretty standard and if you really need to know, it was Mosh who struggled to tag out. A double DDT bought him enough time to reach out to Thrasher and the Headbangers then built their comeback. We see the stage dive, Thrasher covers Ricky, but Mosh throws Robert over the top rope and Tommy Young stops his count. It's announced that the Headbangers have been disqualified for sending an opponent over the top rope as per NWA law. And so, the Rock and Roll keep their NWA World Tag Team titles. It was a pretty smart way to end the bout though, so no complaints. Steve Austin talks about WrestleMania next on Saturday Night Raw. On Nitro, Vicious and Delicious take on the Steiner Brothers. So, the Steiners seem to be back on track, let's see how this one plays out. Buff Bagwell performs an arm drag on Rick and he poses afterwards. He tries to pose again after a suplex but Rick gets right back up and Bagwell takes an overhead belly to belly suplex. Buff takes a Steiner line and a big elbow. The dogface gremlin poses in front of Buff because he too has the stuff. Scotty then tags in and he immediately brings it down to the mat and he also has no issues at all tagging out again and letting Rick back in. Big Scott Norton gets tagged and Rick performs his scoop power slam. Scotty Steiner then comes back in again he again brings it to the mat. Almost instantly, he tags out. It's a little strange and it's almost like he's trying too hard to make amends. We have got Norton and Rick in for a little while and Norton takes control when Buff Daddy lends a hand from the apron. Norton wrenches down on Rick's neck. Buff gets in and he chokes Rick at the ropes and look at this. Charles Robinson tells Buff to stop and Bagwell pushes Charlie. Charlie pushes back and Bagwell doesn't move a single inch. Charlie needs to hit those weights. 
Rick ends up catching Buff with the scoop power slam. Norton gets backdropped out of the ring. Scotty Steiner goes after Norton, but Norton's still able to break up the cover when Rick performs his top rope bulldog. Scott gets dumped out of the ring and then the NWO show up to beat up Rick. Let it be known that Vincent got the better of Ted DiBiase here too. Scotty chases the NWO away with a chair, but it should be noted that Scotty didn't do a whole lot in this match. He didn't pull off any of his usual high impact suplexes and it almost looks like he didn't want to hurt the NWO. Jim Ross wants to know why did Stone Cold attack China at No Way Out and Austin makes it simple. When you step inside the ring your ass belongs to Stone Cold. China's actually lucky that Austin was in such a good mood because it could have been a lot worse. Austin knows Shawn Michaels is at home training and getting ready for Wrestlemania. Austin wants Michaels at his best because an ass weapon's always the same no matter what shape you're in. In regards to Mike Tyson, he's been paid to be an enforcer and that's it. As long as Tyson stays out of Austin's Austin's way then there shouldn't be a problem, but if Tyson decides to get involved, Austin will take his gold tooth and make some jewellery out of it. Stone Cold wraps it up by saying WrestleMania, March 29th, Austin Michaels Tyson, the shit's on and that's the bottom line. Austin takes JR's hat and he flips the bird before heading to the back. We have 5 weeks to go until WrestleMania boys and girls, and hopefully you're as excited as I am. Jeff Jarrett vs Owen Hart on Raw, Booker T vs Rick Martel on Nitro The TV title's on the line here, Martel already took a loss earlier on Nitro so the smart money says he's gonna win the championship tonight, either that or he's gonna look like a total loser who's getting himself in matches that he can't win. He cheap shots Booker at the start of the match, kinda out of character but I dig it. The crowd chants Martel sucks as Rick lays the boots in but Booker replies with a backdrop and a standing sidekick. Booker agrees with the audience, Martel does indeed suck, so it looks like this little friendship these two had is going down the toilet. Martel continues to be a dastardly heel bastard by getting in a cheap shot after a clean break and Booker gets choked on the mat but once again Booker's quick to reply and he pulls off a spine buster and a clothesline. Booker does not let up and he goes after Rick on the outside and back inside the ring Martel runs straight into a back elbow. Martel takes a bit of punishment on the mat but he stops the onslaught with a stun gun and the match spills to the outside again only this time it's Booker T who gets messed up. Things get super serious when Martel applies a chin lock. Booker fights out but he misses a drop kick, allowing Martel to apply the Quebec crab but Booker grabs the bottom rope. Booker scoops Martel up and referee Jimmy Jett takes a bump. I like how he got kicked in the rear but he grabs his head. With the referee down, Saturn shows up and he jumps on the apron. He whacks Martel but Booker sends him back with a Hardham sidekick, smashing his own little King Booker in the process. Martel takes advantage, he applies the Quebec crab, Booker T taps out and we have a new TV champion. This means that Martel goes on to Super Brawl to face the number one contender Perry Saturn. We'll have a bit more on this later. Fun match though and one of the better matchups this week. On Raw, Owen Hart's European Championships up for grabs. Hart vs Triple H is announced for Wrestlemania here by Jim Ross but Owen has to retain his European title in order to get the Helmsley. The championship will be on the line at Wrestlemania in Boston. The NWA guys are told to beat it before the match begins and Owen wipes Jared out with a spinning heel kick. Double J then gets clotheslined out of the ring and Owen keeps the pressure on with a few European uppercuts. Inside the ring Owen performs a top rope crossbody and it was all going so well until Cornette distracted the Blackheart. Jared jumps on Owen's back and Cornette gets in a cheap shot too. Jared stays in control with a swinging neckbreaker and Owen flies out of the ring when trying a running crossbody. Cornette gets involved again and he lays in a few boots but Owen chases him into the ring and Owen ends up taking a DDT from Double J. Cornette smiles as Jared kicks out of a backslide and the two men hit the ring after a double shoulder block. Jim Ross talks about how the pace of this match hasn't led up and he's totally right. The two get up and Owen slides under Jarrett, Jarrett gets his little slop nut smashed into the ring post and the Blackheart pulls off a drop kick from the top rope. Jarrett then gets locked in the sharpshooter and Cornette interferes. The referee throws the match out but Owen isn't done yet. James E. Cornette finds himself in a sharpshooter and the crowd goes nuts. Owen senses that Jarrett's about to attack so he lets go of the hold and look at Cornette selling the sharpshooter here, it's absolutely brilliant. Another good match and honestly I think it's Jarrett's best match since coming back to the World Wrestling Federation. The WWF paid tribute to Michael P.S. Hayes next on Raw while Bret Hart shows his face on Nitro. 
So Brad showing no fear, even though the NWO put a hit on the hitman earlier on Nitro, and Brad says all Hulk Hogan does is make excuses. Hogan said it's Brad's fault that the Hulkster's not the world champion. Apparently, Hogan also said that Brett's to blame for the NWO falling apart. I must have missed that, or we're just making it up as we go along at this point. But Brett says the truth of the matter is Hulk Hogan's afraid of Bret Hart. Brett's not a hard man to find. He's in the arena and usually making himself a jam sandwich and catering. Hulk Hogan does not need to call Brett's name twice. Brett says Hogan's been running and hiding from the hitman for years. It's time to step up and face the excellence of execution. And just then, a fucking biker Michael Liker gets in the ring. Yeah, dirty old asshole crush. Now going by his real name, Brian Adams. Look at his painfully obvious trench coat. <laughs> he's either got an NWO shirt on or he's gonna flash the audience and run away with Doug Dillinger giving chase. Adam says he heard what Hogan said earlier and he wants Brett to know he's got a friend. Brand says he'll always have Brett's back and if Hogan wants a piece of the hitman, then he has to go through Adams first. Remember, Bran left the World Wrestling Federation out of protest due to Montreal, but I'm not so sure how many casual fans would have known that. Adams extends his hand to Brett, the NWO show up, Bran grabs the hitman, and the beating begins. Adams reveals his NWO shirt, Kurt Hennig tosses Brett to the other side of the ring, and then Hulk Hogan shows up. The NWO hold Brett up while Hogan lays in the punches. The hitman's paying dearly for what he did at Starcade, but here comes nature boy Ric Flair to help Brett. Flair hits a few low blows, Brett magically heals and he starts throwing punches, and the NWO get out of the ring while Brett and Flair shake hands. Can't believe a dirty old asshole just joined the New World Order. They'll take anyone these days. As Raw's in Dallas tonight, and because the battles between the Von Erichs and the Fabulous Freebirds made Dallas a hotspot for pro wrestling in the early to mid 80s, the WWF decided to pay tribute to Michael P.S. Hayes. They revealed that Doc Hendricks is actually Michael Hayes, and oh shit, I never would have guessed. I thought you guys were lying to me in the comments this whole time when I wouldn't call him Michael Hayes. After a video airs, Bad Street USA plays in the arena, and here comes Hayes giving it stags and pretending he's back in the Dallas Sportatorium. After lip syncing, for a bit, Hayes wants to introduce the next match and that's when the lights go out in the arena. The big red machine has no issues walking further down the block and burning Bad Street down to the ground. Hayes tries to take Kane out with his cowboy boot but it has no effect. Hayes takes a choke slam and a tombstone pile driver and Paul Bearer says the free bird is grounded. Brian Christopher and Perita Morgan take on Aguila and Takamichi Noku next on Raw. On Nitro, Jericho and Guerrero wrestle Malenko and Benoit. Before the Nitro match, JJ Dillon says Booker T was scheduled to defend his TV title against Saturn and he needs to clarify something. I have no idea what he needs to clarify. Booker lost and Martel's now the champion. Booker, Martel, and Saturn come out to the entranceway, and Dylan says there's a change to Super Brawl. Booker T vs Rick Martel's gonna happen at the show for the TV title. Whoever wins that match will then defend the championship against Perry Saturn. So it's just like WrestleMania 10, only with the TV title. I was just about to lose my shit when Dylan announced Martel vs Booker, but at least Perry still gets his shot at the gold. God knows how much this man's already been ripped off because of that snitch and grass and nark and rat Rick Martel. The tag team match starts off with Benoit and Guerrero. Eddie pokes Chris in the eye and he lays in a few chops. Benoit performs a press slam and Guerrero runs to Jericho for some comfort. Chris still has his cruiserweight title on by the way and he's forced to take it off when he gets in the ring and then he gets backdropped by Chris Benoit. Malenko comes in and Chris gets instantly taken out so Eddie comes back and we get to see Malenko and Guerrero working against each other again on Nitro. Eddie gets dropped across the top rope, he accidentally knocks Jericho off the apron, and Malenko then dumps Eddie over the top rope from the powerbomb position. I think that's supposed to be a disqualification, but the referee lets it go. After hugging his partner on the outside, Eddie gets back in and he takes a few hard chops from Benoit, followed by a snap suplex. Benoit then performs a bridging German suplex on Eddie, but Jericho runs in to break the cover. Here comes Malenko, and Eddie continues to get punished. He mocks Jericho by putting Eddie in the lion tamer, and this leads to Jericho and Benoit hitting the ring and immediately going back out to fight with each other. Eddie performs the frog splash, Benoit breaks the cover with his diving headbutt, and this forces Jericho back in the ring to save Guerrero. It ends with Eddie taking out Chris with a crossbody to the outside while Malenko counters a lion tamer. 
Dean's able to lock in his Texas Cloverleaf and Chris Jericho taps out. Another good match on Nitro, WCW have been putting on better matches on Nitro recently in comparison to Raw, but you have to search them out among all the other nonsense. When it's good, it's good, and when it's bad, it's pretty awful. Over on Raw, a few light heavyweights have a match, and at this point, it almost feels like Takamichi Noku and Brian Christopher absolutely have to be involved in light heavyweight contests in order for the bouts to appear on Raw. Should really be called the Christopher Michinoku division. Christopher checked out his pulse after a sunset flip powerbomb to the outside. We also see another great looking corkscrew plancha from Aguila. Other highlights included Christopher's released German suplex and this slap across the face that brought Taka back to Japan for a few moments. Parita performed a pop-up powerbomb too, but he missed the splash, and this leads to the Michinoku driver. Taka and Aguila win the match. Farouk has a big motherfucking problem next on Raw when he faces Steve Blackman. On Nitro, we've got an Eric Bischoff promo. Seeing as Farouk could very well get murdered in this next matchup, The Rock decided to give Farouk and the rest of the nation some presents. Rock's relationship with the nation has been a little, uh, rocky. So the IC champ wants to show there's no dissension within the faction, there's no hard feelings here. So Rock gives Kama, Dilo, and Mark $15,000 Rolex watches. The boys take their gifts and then Rock says there's no one better to lead the nation than Farouk. He's the greatest thing since an egg white omelette. So from the bottom of Rock's heart, he presents Farouk with his present. Farouk opens up his gift and it's a giant framed photo of The Rock. Fantastic. He throws it down just as Steve Blackman comes out and Steve Blackman plans on throwing Farouk down tonight on Raw. Rock admires his photo on the outside as Blackman takes a punch to the face. This only serves to piss Blackman off and Steve delivers his three hit motherfucker combo. Farouk comes back with a slam and Steve's diving crossbody doesn't miss. He just changed direction slightly so Farouk wouldn't get seriously injured tonight. He lets Farouk hit the dominator on him because Steve just feels sorry for his opponent at this point, but Farouk decides he's going to use Rocky's portrait as a weapon. Rocky grabs it back and Steve takes advantage. Farouk gets pinned on Raw's war and don't feel bad Farouk, Blackman's just unbeatable. Rock gets in the ring and he wants to know why Farouk tried to ruin his portrait. Farouk tells Mark Henry to hold it up so he can destroy it properly and The Rock isn't amused one bit. How dare Farouk ruin his gift after all the thought Rocky put into it. Backstage, Cole tries to interview the nation, there's absolute chaos going on inside their locker room. Dilo comes out and he says, it's all good, it's nothing but love inside the faction's locker room. Everyone's just getting ready for a long flight and there's nothing to be worried about. On Nitro, Bischoff says Kevin Nash was fined $50,000 tonight for that jackknife powerbomb and Hogan's in the back right now writing Kevin a check and getting his ass out of jail. Bischoff says the conspiracy theories about the NWO can finally get led to rest in the next match. Macho Man Randy Savage and Hollywood Hogan are gonna join forces, they are gonna work together and put an end to Sting and Luger in the main event, and that main event is coming up next. Instead of wasting time with bullshit like this, why not give your 4.5 minute main event a bit more time? Our shows end with tag team matches. On Raw, Mark Merrow and Goldust vs Cactus Jack and Chainsaw. On Nitro, Hogan and Savage vs Luger and Sting. Goldust wears his old Goldust attire in this matchup and Sable does not come down the ringside with Marvelous Mark. Goldust and Merrow get out of the ring and they try to run away when they get a close look at Terry Funk's chainsaw, but they eventually come back down and Merrow gets pissed off when the crowd chants for Sable. Goldust kisses Chainsaw Charlie and he gets punched in the face immediately afterwards. Merrow tags in and Funk gets body slammed after taking a few punches, but Mark's still distracted by fans chanting for his wife. In comes Cactus Jack and Foley puts Merrow on the mat with a shoulder block and Funk comes back in for a double drop toe hold followed by a pile driver. Marvelous Mark strikes Chainsaw in the corner before delivering a DDT. Goldust comes back in and Terry takes a bionic elbow. The crowd pops here, but it's not for Goldust's offense. It's because Sable's shown up and she's walking down the ringside. Merrow tells his wife to go away, but she hangs around long enough.
enough to see Luna destroy her flowers. Sable goes after Luna, the referee tries to break things up, and in the middle of all this chaos, Goldust gets hit with a steel chair and the baby faces win the match. Mero has to hold Sable back and Sable's boob ends up falling out. There's a satellite feed version of this episode of Raw that includes the fallen fun bag if you're so inclined to hunt it down, but it's been cut out of the edited version. Jerry Lawler does mention it on commentary though. The main event wasn't good and I 100% believe the nip slip was intentional. I mean, why else would this match close out Raw? Speaking of boobs, Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan attack Sting and Luger during the entrances. Hogan goes after Sting, Savage goes after Luger. Hogan brings Sting inside the ropes where he hits a corner clothesline as Luger hits Savage with a steel chair, but the Stinger comes back with his own clothesline and these two end up fighting on the outside again. Savage and Luger then have a very brief exchange inside the ropes as Sting goes to his corner. Randy wants to tag Hogan in, Hogan's too busy selling and talking to Eric Bischoff, so Randy waits until Hogan's on the apron before slapping him on the back and forcing Hogan to get in and wrestle. Hogan protests but he has no choice. He waits for the perfect opportunity though and he ends up getting the better of Luger while Randy waits on the apron. Lex takes two clotheslines and three elbow drops. Hogan misses the big leg drop though and this gives Lex a chance to tag in Sting. We see two Stinger splashes and the crowd goes nuts. We see the Scorpion Deathlock. Randy has a chance to help Hogan but he decides he's not gonna bother. The bell rings when the NWO come down to the ring. Bret Hart and Ric Flair come down to help Sting and Luger, and during this brawl, Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan begin fighting each other. Team WCW clear out the ring, and Nitro fades to black. I can't decide which main event was worse. I'm giving it to Nitro again this week and that's based on the in-ring action and nothing else. Barbarian vs Ming, Booker vs Martel and the Guerrero and Jericho tag matches were all good. On Raw, the only real standout match in my opinion was Owen Hart vs Jeff Jarrett. It wasn't a strong Nitro heading into Super Brawl 8 but I thought it was still better than Raw. Our scores are now 53 points to Nitro, 54 points to Raw and we've got 14 ties. No Monday Night Raw meant Nitro broke its own TV record with a 5.1. Raw recorded a 3.0 rating on Saturday night. We have got Super Brawl 8 coming up this Sunday so join me and we'll hopefully finally get a WCW World Heavyweight Champion. We'll also see two TV title matches so turn on your notifications and watch it ASAP. On Raw next week, the New Age Outlaws battle LOD, the American Dream makes an appearance, and Steve Motherfucking Blackman takes on The Rock, so it should be a good one. Thanks for watching guys, subscribe and all that stuff if you haven't already, and take care.